3% at any given time of your target audience are ready to buy. It doesn't matter which way you slice it nowadays, social selling, particularly over LinkedIn, is becoming a must have. Now, we spoke to the brilliant Amelia Sordell about how you can put these customers in your funnel, nurture these customers, and when they're ready to buy, you're the first name that they think of. Some absolute gold from a true expert in our marketplace. Let's jump into it. We are joined by a special, special guest today. Now, undoubtedly, you would have seen this person on LinkedIn because her content is so ubiquitous and so brilliant. We are joined by the wonderful Amelia Sordell, um, who is the owner and founder of Clout which is a personal branding agency. And I just want to emphasize that, emphasize that, a personal branding agency. Welcome, Amelia. Tell us a little bit about yourself and, and tell us about this personal branding. Yeah, so yeah, as you said, my name's Amelia. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so yeah, we build the personal brands of individuals, founders, entrepreneurs, leadership teams, and we work very closely with marketing teams as well to roll out personal branding as a strategy within businesses, usually for the point of generating thought leadership, generating more sales, which is obviously what we're here to talk about, um, building out kind of that advocacy within a business, creating communities, and also we work with a lot of founders who are looking to get funding too, because that's something that a lot of businesses and a lot of VCs look for at the minute is does that founder have a lot of kind of clout online <laughs> without a lack of a better word hence the name hence it's interesting name. right because this is so hot topic in sales at the moment now y y you can speak about this in great deal of detail I'm sure but when I first started selling uh what 15 16 years ago LinkedIn wasn't really around and then it came around and then it was like right this is a way of contacting people to sell them things but we're seeing this transition now where it's no longer about that it's more about building a personal brand, which you do, and almost creating that as a way of becoming a trusted expert so people will listen to your opinion before they buy from you. So how have you noticed this shift and, 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 and how are you conveying that to your clients? It's a good question, actually, because I started out my career essentially in sales. I started out in PR, I then moved into event sales, and then I became a headhunter in the tech ecosystem. And so there's always been this like selling person in me and I know we had this conversation where we jumped on here when that it's funny that you're saying you know you're a personal branding person well actually I'm a salesperson I'm just selling myself in a completely different way and I like to look at this um, a little bit like if you've ever come across sort of the HubSpot consideration pie graph they talk about or at least HubSpot if, it, if you can call them they they talk about having 85% of any of your target audience at any given time are not looking to sell right 85% they're not interested they don't want to hear from you etc 12% of your ideal target audience are considering selling. So they're thinking about their, whether or not they want to buy from you. They're maybe not quite sure they have a problem yet, but they're, they know something's annoying and they're trying to figure out what it is. 3% at any given time of your target audience are ready to buy. They are looking for someone like you. They want to buy from someone like you. They're doing their research, etc. The problem is on LinkedIn and on every single other social media platform and online period is most salespeople and most businesses try to attack the 3%. So everyone is going, buy from me, buy from me, buy from me. And that is a very small part of your market share that you're trying to attract or attack. <laughs> I like to use the word attack. The 85% therefore gets forgotten. No one cares that these people aren't ready to buy yet. And what personal branding does is it warms people up in the 85%, so the majority, before they are ready to buy. So when they get to that consideration stage, before they've even become a lead, when they get to that consideration stage, you are the first person they come to. And that's why personal branding for salespeople particularly is so powerful because you then become the option, not just an option amongst many. That's really interesting. And those statistics make it even more compelling. But how would a salesperson do that, right? Because bear in mind that they've got a lot of considerations themselves. It's about building pipeline. It's about generating revenue. And that creates sometimes some short-term thinking, right? So if you were to give some practical advice on how someone can start personally branding themselves so people become aware of them when they're ready to make that buying decision, what, what sort of tactics and techniques would that look like? So there's a couple of ways you can do this. I always say to people before you think about posting content, you need to think about what you want to be known for. Like what, what are the key topics that you want people to think of when they think of you or when they come across your content that kind of splits into two things for me one is your brand values and these are the things that you want people to feel about you right so 
that might be your matter of fact, you might be funny, you might be to the point, you might be no bullshit, you might be like whatever it is, but those need to be your clear values of things that you want people to feel when they come in contact with your with your content. Um, my brand values for, just for reference so that anyone can, listening to this can get their kind of creative juices flowing is, um, I like, I wanna come across as approachable always, like I never want anyone to think that they can't just slide into my DMs and ask me a question, hence why we are here today. Um, I also want people to think I'm authentic. I show up on video exactly the same way as I show up on text post, on you know images I share. I'm I'm the same person. And the third thing is I want people to think I'm to the point. Like I I'm a straight shooter. I don't beat around the bush. I like to deliver people stuff in a way that's approachable, but also I don't I don't mince my words. I want people to understand that I'm coming from a place of empathy. But if I tell you something's not great, then that's what I think. And so. I've built my entire brand around those things because that is really true to who I am. So that, that's how I want people to feel when they come across my content. And then you have on your other side, you have your brand pillars. So your brand pillars are the topics that you want to be known for. That could be, if you are in tech sales, it might be that you want to be known as, you know, the go-to supplier of choice in this particular enterprise cloud software. Like that could be one of your pillars. The other two pillars could be you're a father. You, you, maybe you're aspirationally wanting to be a CRO one day or, or, or a sales director or whatever it is. So you want to have leadership as one of your pillars. Maybe you want to have culture as one of your pillars because if you want to be a leader in the future, you've got to be damn sure you're building up a culture of, you know, a, a high performing culture. So you can start building out these pillars um, of topics that you can talk about online. Again, to give you give you a bit of a creative juice kind of acceleration. Mine are personal branding, championing startups and SMEs, and being a strong young business owner, particularly a female business owner, because I feel like women are really grossly underrepresented in um, small business ownership. So all the things I talk about hit one of those topics. And so eventually people get to know me as Amelia, the personal branding person, Amelia, the person that works with all the startups. Oh, you're a startup, you need to go and speak to Amelia. And the other thing is I have so many young people and young women particularly coming to me asking me for advice because that's what I put out into the ecosystem. So very quickly you understand like the compounding impact of talking about those three things and making people feel those three ways eventually then pushes everyone that you're trying to attract into that 85% that I mentioned earlier so that when they are ready to become a lead for me or even if they're never going to buy from me but they see someone else is looking for someone just like me I get tagged to hell in all those posts I get sent screenshots people recommend me they introduce me via email when they've never even worked for me before it builds up a community of people who know like and trust you and even if they've not paid you a dime are willing to recommend you to other people who might. So it's expertise fundamentally, right? I mean, you, yeah. you're basically saying that there's these these core pillars that you want to be portrayed as an expert on. And then when it comes to making a decision or it comes to making a referral, you're the first name that, you know, pops into their head. And I guess with a, with a, with a salesperson, that would be things like the market that they operate in, the technology or the product that they sell or the service that they sell, and then a particular niche perhaps within that technology or within that particular market that they're working in. And it's not that hard to do, is it, surely? So I think the biggest stumbling block for everyone, and this is true of life and of everything else, is starting. Like knowing where to start. And I think a lot of people go, oh, how do I build my personal brand? Or, you know, where do I even go? Because they have no idea about what that first step looks like. And I always say to people, the easiest first step to take is to start commenting on other people's stuff. Go on LinkedIn and start commenting on influencers on if you're in tech sales go and find the tech influencers not the tech sales influencers because your audience aren't following them go and follow the people that your audience is following and start commenting on their stuff start engaging with their contents save their profiles as bookmarks on your chrome and every day go and comment on their most recent post the compounding impact of that is by the way, without sharing a single piece of content the compounding impact of that is your name appears in these people's posts consistently and they already have a network of people that you want to speak to because if they are an influencer in the space in which you're trying to sell there's a good chance all your customers are already following them so number one you are constantly coming up in that feed people are seeing your name etc number two that influencer is going to notice you because I haven't got a massive following I'm like 43,000 right now I know every single person who comments on my stuff regularly I know all of them like the, and there's a lot of them right there's a couple of couple probably a couple of thousand of people that consistently post or comment on my stuff I know who all of them are so you'll start to get known by that influencer the third kind of piece of this puzzle and probably the more strategic side of this puzzle is if that influencer replies to you 
a portion of their network's gonna see you, their reply to you and therefore your name. So it's a really great way of kind of building up your confidence, building up your network, going into kind of a party where all your favorite customers already are and introducing yourself to them without even having to sell. And then the kind of benefit of doing all this stuff is you'll get more profile views, people will eventually start knowing who you are and you can then start repurposing the comments that you've left on these posts as posts of your own. So it's a really nice baby step way to start building up your personal brand without even posting anything yet. That's really interesting. Now the question that I guess every salesperson is gonna ask listening to this is, when can I ask for something? Because everything you're describing at the moment is incredibly valuable. It's very much a long play though, right? At what stage can someone turn around and say, can we have a meeting? Or can I talk to you about a product? Or can I learn more about your business? When would you recommend actually making that leap into trying to create a call to action for it? Yeah, so to give everyone context, I'm the founder of my business, right? So I am the salesperson. I have a team of people that are delivery based. They're all creatives, but they're not salespeople. They don't, they don't bring in the leads yet, right? They're all very new. So I am the salesperson. So the way I kind of look at this is, right, how can I run my content in such a way that's going to be my own kind of mini funnel? How can I push people into my DMs as a goal conversion so that then I can have warm conversations with them or I can have inbound conversations with them. And the way you do that is you literally operate your content like a funnel. So at the beginning of the week, I talk about stuff that I know has virality to it. And vir by what I mean by virality is it is, I know personally, it has a higher chance of going viral because it's a personal story. It's maybe something more motivational. Um, it's stuff that's very vulnerable and I'm not sharing these things disingenuously. Like they're really genuinely things I love and I care and that are really my personal and authentic feelings. But I know by putting that in the beginning of the week and then start building in a ton of brand awareness at the beginning of the week so that then I can start sharing content in the middle of the week that's maybe a little bit more niche, a little bit more based on commentary on personal branding, how to guides lists. I do a once, once a week live on how people can build their personal brand on LinkedIn. And then at the end, of, and so that's like your kind of middle funnel. And then at the end of the week, we share something called a hook post. So that is your sales post, your customer testimonial, your, hey, look at this WhatsApp I just got from my client. Screenshots do so well here. Like we screenshot metrics, we screenshot everything. Super rugged, super underproduced. People love it. And we share that at the end of every single week. And what happens is eventually, if someone's followed you and they are your ideal customer, but you will build up followers who aren't your ideal customers, and that's cool because they can be advocates for you. But if someone follows you and they're an ideal customer, eventually they will get pushed through that funnel and they will turn into a lead in your DMs because they'll see that hook post and you've given all this free stuff away and they're really bought into you. They'll see that hook post that you've posted and go, hey, actually, I really do need that tech or, oh, wait, no, I really do need that someone to help me find my next hire. I need a recruiter. Oh wait, I saw that person, that recruiter post that thing the other day. So you're building out a funnel with your content. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're doing this, you, it's gonna be a couple of weeks to a couple of months before you start getting inbound leads because you have to build up that brand foundation, get that brand equity going first. And the really, really powerful way of doing this in, and kind of plugging that gap between 100% inbound and not inbound at all is when you're getting likes and reactions and comments on your posts on LinkedIn, you go through those every single day from the ones that you posted yesterday, the day before, and you follow up with the people that fit your ideal customer criteria and say, hey, Thank you so much for supporting my post. Um, I thought it was really interesting when you said X, Y, Z, why do you think that? Or thanks so much for liking my post. Did you see this article that was related to it the other day? What are your thoughts? And so you start creating conversations with people that you otherwise wouldn't have conversation with. You're not asking them for anything yet. They've engaged with your content and they're warm, they're a lead. You're sending them something that's of value to them and then you can have that conversation. And when they come back to you, you can then continue that conversation down to a point where it could be a day, it could be a week, it could be a month, but eventually you will feel like it's the right time to say, hey, you know, we do this, we, the business is just like yours. Would you be interested in having a conversation? But you've already built up that trust. And I don't know about you, but I would much rather have 20 targeted conversations with people that have a 90% or whatever the inbound rate of success um, conversion is conversations with people, then spraying and praying 100 to 200 to 300 to 400 people with spam messages every single week and just hoping that one of them lands. Completely. It's, it's so interesting you hearing, hearing you speak about that because it's about where you're spending your time, right? Because the effort and the, and the resource that you're putting into doing this, which is successful, is probably exactly the same as sending out a thousand in-mails that are never, ever going to convert into a conversation, let alone a sale. That's really, really fascinating. And I guess 
there's a lot of positives on the right things to do. What I'm always interested to learn, because I think it encourages self-reflection for people listening to this, are what are the absolute no-nos? What would you recommend never doing under any circumstances? Okay, so I, as a founder of a business, I get peppered with um, sales messages. And I've seen some good, I've seen some bad, I've seen some real ugly ones, and I've seen some ones that really caught my attention. Um, the ones, I'll start with the positives first, because I'll give everyone a brownie point. The ones that really cut through the noise for me are the voice notes, the ones that say, hey, Amelia, I can see you're doing well with clout. Congratulations on your latest hire. But it would be really interesting to, to speak to you about this product that I'm selling. So you've got my attention because you've left me a voice note. Curiosity's got the better of me and I've listened to it. Um, and you've personalized it. I know that you've looked through my profile. I know you've been commenting on my posts. I know you've seen my most recent one where we've just onboarded someone. Okay, we'll have a conversation. Even if I don't have any interest in working with you or purchasing your product, I'll go back to you and say, that's really kind, thank you, but I'm not interested right now, maybe for future. The ones that don't do so well are the ones that connect with you and then immediately follow up with a sales message. And I'm like, nah not interested because I, I think I'm a little bit more maybe jaded by it because I was a recruiter and I know damn well that you don't need to operate that way to make really good sales. Now I'm not downplaying any other kind of sales job, but recruitment's pretty bloody hard because you are a salesperson trying to sell a product, i.e. people that can decide to not be sold, can decide to sell them to someone else, sell themselves to someone else, or can just disappear. So that's a really difficult sales job. So if I could have done that with personal branding and not selling, sending those terrible messages, in my mind, maybe I'm a bit arrogant, but I don't think there's any excuse for sending those types of cold messages anymore. So I hate them. I think they're terrible. Um, what are some of the, the no-nos? So some of the no-nos would be doing exactly that, connecting and, and, and sending a sales message straight away. Like you've got to wine and dine people before you try and take them to bed. Do you know what I mean? Like you have to warm them up a little bit. Um, another thing is sending PDFs or anything that's an external link. There is an absolute nightmare with phishing on LinkedIn. So I have a blanket rule that if you send me a PDF, I'm never going to open it or reply to you. Like that's just blanket. It doesn't happen. So if you're sending PDFs to people, I would 100% recommend you don't because I know a lot of other probably way more successful business owners than me that definitely don't even entertain attachments of any kind. So don't send attachments where possible. Um, what are other things? Other things are just generally just not taking no for an answer. Like, don't get me wrong. I understand you can't take no sometimes for an answer. You have to push a little bit, you know, persistence beats resistance and all that kind of thing. But eventually you get to a point where you're like, yeah, I'm not going to make this sale. Like stop beating the dead horse and go and find someone who's much more willing to listen to you than someone who's just going to ignore you or tell you to go away, which is why personal branding is so powerful because it means you don't have those annoying go away conversations. You have those, yeah, actually, I am really interested in talking to you conversations. Well, so interesting. So many absolute gems there. Now, you're, you've got a, a wonderful prevalence in, on, online and particularly on LinkedIn. If people want to get in touch with you or people want to learn more about clout, what's the best way of doing that? I am, I believe, the only Amelia Sordell on LinkedIn. So if you Google me, or Google me, that's an adjective now, isn't it? Um, if you go on LinkedIn and you search Amelia Sordell, I will come up. Same with Instagram. Um, I've been talked into TikTok, although I don't think you'll find it that exciting. But I spend most of my time on LinkedIn. Um, just by the nature of the beast. As I said, I'm a salesperson. It's where I get all my sales from, or most of my sales from. So you can go and find me on LinkedIn. Well, that was absolutely fascinating. Jam-packed with tips. I absolutely love that idea of only 3% of your market is actually ready to buy. It's so important nowadays that you build a presence, come across as a trusted advisor and expert before you start selling your wares online. I hope that was useful. Remember to subscribe. And as always, happy selling.